All right. Um, yeah, so my name is Daniel Huffman, and you've already seen a quarter of my slides, so it's a good start. And there's four of them, but don't worry, none of them have any maps, so we're fine. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that I appreciate most about the cartographic community is all of our willingness to share knowledge with each other. And that's kind of why we're all here this week, to teach, to learn from each other, and to connect in ways that make us better at what we do. And there are a lot of us who play a pretty active part in this sharing of knowledge, and we do it in a pretty wide variety of ways. Some of us, when we think about sharing knowledge with each other, we might think about a forum like this, standing on a stage at a conference talking to people about what we do. Other people think about sharing knowledge in terms of publishing something. Maybe that's an article in cartographic perspectives, or maybe it's a blog post or a video tutorial on YouTube, something like that. These methods are great. I sort of call them these big sharing methods. Uh, they're great because they can reach a sizable audience. So if we've got something that we think is worth sharing, it's nice to put it in front of a bunch of people. Uh, but they also have their challenges as well. It can take a lot of time and effort, for example, to participate in one of these methods. If I'm going to present or I'm going to write something, I've got to have the time to sit down and think carefully about how I'm going to structure my argument and think about images that really exemplify what I'm trying to get at in a way that a large audience can understand. So you have to be the sort of person who has that energy to spare in order to participate in that way. There's also the emotional effort that can attend putting yourself out there, even if it's just in print, and claiming that title of expert, right? To say, I know something. You should really pay attention to me right now because you're going to learn something great. And then you, you know, wait for blog comments to come in and hope that no one says, well, actually, that's completely wrong and no one does that anymore and you're stupid, right? So there's, there's some vulnerability that can attend taking on the role of teacher. And then, of course, if you choose to do things like get up on stage, that can also be really uncomfortable. There's like 200 of you right now staring at me. I find that really uncomfortable. And I'm not the only person who has those kind of feelings. Uh, so who's presenting or has presented this year at NASIS? Raise your hand. All right, now who has some degree of fear or anxiety associated with that fact? Yeah, that's, okay, see, more of them keep going up as you see, oh, other people feel that way too. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, right, that's like at least half of you there. And I find that comforting in a certain way. Like, I'm presenting, and I know some of you aren't paying too much attention because you're freaking out about the talk you're going to give later on. <laughs> right, that makes me feel better, so I just like to share that. But that's a little bit of a side note, uh, right? So the main thing, though, is that these methods, these big sharing methods of publishing and talking in groups aren't for everybody. You might not have the time, the energy, or the willingness uh, to be able to put yourself out there at that time in that way. But there are other ways we participate in this culture of knowledge sharing that is so much a part of the cartographic community. I waited too long and the laptop went to sleep. Oh no, Tom, you have to use your thumbprint again. <laughs> yeah. Or your, yeah, this is Tom's laptop and it's keyed to his biometric ID and since I don't have slides that advance often enough. Should I just stand here with you? <laughs> if you would like to, it'll make me feel better. <laughs> Yes, I'm just going to, okay, so I'm just going to keep hitting the up arrow from time to time. Uh, in any case, right, there are other ways we share knowledge. There are more informal ways, ways that we share little pieces just from the top of our head that are simple and sort of low barrier. Think about a colleague who emails you and says, hey, I heard you worked on a map of Maine last year. I'm making one now, too. Can you tell me where you got your data from? Something like that. And you send them an email back with a few links, a few words of advice, and you've helped them without really a lot of particular time and effort. Or think about the things that happen on the sidelines of this conference. Maybe you're really interested in learning more about how to do cool stuff like making textures out of the wall. And so you pull Dylan aside and say, hey, can you show me more of that? And maybe he'll pull out a laptop and sit down with you on one of those comfy chairs out there and go through something for five or ten minutes in Photoshop. You know, and so you know, he's not really giving you a presentation per se. It's just kind of extemporaneous. It's not going to be the most the most polished, the most planned kind of discussion, but it's going to work just fine. And it's very reflective of the way that cartographers interact with each other whenever we get together, either in person or electronically. These kind of bits of short sharing are of interest to me. In particular, how can we take that simplicity and ease uh, and informality and make it available to more people in the way that the big sharing methods have? And so I just want to share with you a couple of uh, experiments, as it were, in my experience that speak to this. And the first one uh, I want to share with you is something that I organized at the University of Wisconsin Cartography Lab called the Cart Lab Education Series, or CLESS. And this is what CLESS looks like. It's just a bunch of people gathered around once a week in the lab. 
uh, maybe two people, maybe two dozen, kind of depends on the day. And one person, usually sitting at a computer, spends 15 minutes talking about something they know. And here's just some example topics that have come up over the past five or six years that we've been doing this. And it's a pretty wide variety of practical things, some Illustrator, some Landsat, some project walkthroughs. It's very much like a, sort of a PCD that only happens with one talk per week. We're not asking the participants, primarily students, to give a 45-minute lecture. We're not asking them to write a big, long piece. We're trying to keep it simple and easy for them to participate. We're only asking for like 15 minutes of their time. And I think that this causes more people to participate. We previously had longer lecture series for the students at UW-Madison. And the participation is a lot higher, I think, now that we've kept it a little bit shorter. And we're not asking for a lot of prep on their part either. It's informal. It's very much like that individual one-on-one -on -one laptop sharing that you're going to see around here. It's off the top of the head. There's no slides. There's no rehearsal. Uh, the only difference is that we put it at a set time and place so that more people can be there and they know what's happening. So that one-on-one -on -one sharing becomes a one-on-ten kind of interaction so that more people can get knowledge out of that without really requiring anything extra of the presenter. The other sort of goal besides keeping it simple is there's the hope that uh, by putting people in these presenter situations, they'll start to realize the value of the knowledge that they have, some of the things that ta they take for granted every day. I think we're really good at looking around at our colleagues and assuming they know way more than they actually do and thinking, well, this you know, bit of Landsat, this bit of Photoshop is every day to me. It's not worth sharing. Everyone knows that, right? But when you sit down in that chair and you tell people and you see they're gathering around, they're interested, they're listening, you realize that things that seem ordinary to you are actually pretty interesting to other people and they're worth sharing. Uh, and maybe that puts you in a f position to feel more empowered and more willing to take on that role of teacher in the future. So that's class. We're trying to keep it simple. We're trying to keep it easy, make it uh, easy for people to participate in and keep it really informal and low barrier to entry. Uh, the other experiment I want to talk about is something I did on Twitter recently, a hashtag called Practicardo. How many of you have seen Practicardo hashtag in your Twitter feeds? That's awesome. That's way more than I expected, so that's pretty good. Uh, for a year, 52 weeks, once a week, I put some sort of bit of practical cartographic advice on my Twitter feed. Whatever I could fit in 140 characters plus some sort of example image or maybe like a 20 second video. And the goal, again, is to try and keep it simple and short. I like sharing cartographic suggestions and advice with people, but I'm kind of lazy. I don't necessarily want to sit down for five or six hours and put together some sort, of, some sort of long blog tutorial. I don't always have the energy for that. I can make one of these things in just a few minutes and put it out there. And it's not only easy for me, it's easy for the audience. It takes a few seconds to pick something up from this. And I think that's where a lot of the value in this short sharing comes from. More people are willing to engage with that material when it's, I'm only asking for a few seconds of your time, or in class, a few minutes of your time. If I put together an hour-long tutorial, which I've done before, the only people who are really going to invest themselves in learning that are the people who say, I really need to know this thing in the near future. It's really going to pay off for me. Whereas here and in class, you might be willing to say, you know, I don't know what's going on with this thing. I don't know if I'm ever going to use it, but I'm willing to take a few minutes to pick up something that might accidentally come in handy later on. So I think by keeping it short, there's sort of more knowledge transfer that can potentially happen. And I was certainly willing to share more because it was uh, less time on my part. I probably put together the equivalent of many, many blog posts uh, without, by just breaking it into these small chunks. And that's not to say the big methods are bad, right? They have their place, but some things just fit in tweets better. These, any one of these individual, individual tweets does not need a you know, PCD presentation, for example. They're just too short. So uh, the other thing I'll also add about this, too, is that like Kles, uh, like the participants in Kles, I kind of learned something about myself and the value of the knowledge that I had when doing this. I didn't think I had 52 of these things in me, that there was not nearly as much. Uh, there was much more that I could share than I had originally realized, and it mostly came from everyday things. I would sit down at my computer to make a map, and I would go to some data source that I visited dozens of times or click some button in Illustrator that I keep clicking all the time, and I'd think, wait a minute. Maybe other people want to hear about this, too. And so I'd put it out there, and it turns out some people did, and that was great to see. Uh, and it's not just my knowledge that goes into this, either. Several of you in the audience have been tweeting with the Practicardo hashtag, which has been awesome, and I hope you'll keep doing that, and more people will join in. I think it could be a, a pretty valuable resource that we can start to all build together of these little quick uh, cartographic tips. 
So those are my two little sort of experiments in short sharing, but trying to put that out in front of a larger audience. So, you know, we don't always have to participate in the sharing of knowledge through these big methods. We don't have to get up in front of people. You don't have to write something. It could just be one-on-one. -on -one. But also, while you're thinking about your, you know, sharing knowledge individually, think about ways to put that out in front of more people. So maybe you're sitting down on the sidelines of the conference here with your laptop and you're going to show somebody how to do something. See if anyone else around wants to see what you're talking about. And just call out, hey, we're going to talk about QGIS Print Composer over here. If you want to gather around, kind of thing, make a little impromptu session. Or think about using social media to share all the good stuff that you've learned today. There's plenty of people who aren't here. And you may have plenty of colleagues who would like to learn some of the stuff that's been shared today. And this is really good for those of you who think you have nothing to contribute. Because I always like to say, you know, everybody's got something to share. Everyone has a contribution they can make to uh, cartographic knowledge. And some of you immediately think, well, he's not talking about me. I don't know anything about maps. And that's not true. But even if you think it is, you just learned a bunch of interesting things today. And you will for the rest of the day and the rest of this week. So you're a learner today. Go be a teacher tomorrow. There's no sort of rule that says you have some minimum time you have to wait before you're ready to start teaching people. So now you all have stuff to share. So get out there and do that. It's pretty valuable to people. However you do it, though, think about the stuff that's ordinary to you and the stuff that's everyday to you and the little tiny bites of knowledge in your head, the things that you assume other people already know or other people aren't interested in. Because I guarantee you, you're going to find a larger audience than you expect for that stuff. And we'd love to hear it. Thanks.